Welcome to the Bay Area Case Studies Virtual College Fair Explore Session. Thank you for joining us. A few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can see the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our representatives at any time. Your camera microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. This is one of many different sessions happening, so be sure to sign up for more later. This presentation is also going to be recorded and will be available for you on a week at stripescan.com backslash BACS. We have a great variety of schools that we're presenting to you today, that variety in size, location, and characteristic. We hope this session broadens your horizons during your college search. And we're going to click on the list that we have of colleges, and I'm going to announce them for you as well. We have, um, we have, excuse me, we have DePaul University, Chapman University, Providence College, University of Vermont, Oberlin College, and University of Richmond. And so now I turn things over to DePaul. You can start us off. Have a great time and enjoy the presentations, everyone. All right, thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. My name is Annie Mills. I'm DePaul University's regional representative, and I am based in San Diego, California. I work exclusively um, with students in California. DePaul is a private Catholic institution in the heart of Chicago, Illinois. We have an undergraduate population of about 14,500 students. Um, I would describe us as a school with big city resources. And of course, we're in the third largest US city, but we um, very much by design, make sure that you have a very personalized academic experience. Our average class size is about 22 and 90% of our classes have fewer than 40 students. Our student body at DePaul is very diverse and reflects the diversity of our global community. 40% of our students are coming to DePaul from out of state and California leads the way, which obviously thrills me. 44% um, of our students at DePaul are students of color and 35% of our freshmen are the very first in their family to earn a college degree. We are a Catholic school, um, but the experience really is as Catholic as you make it. We have students from over 40 different faith and non-faith backgrounds on campus. As you might have guessed, we were named for St. Vincent de Paul. He dedicated his life to ending cycles of poverty and social injustice, and we really aim to keep that Vincentian tradition alive. So as a student, we prepare you to think and act with others in mind, using your higher education as a means to engage cultural, social, religious, and ethical values in service to others. Um, now, our students spend um, split their time between two campuses in the city of Chicago. Our Lincoln Park campus is what we call our urban neighborhood campus. It has a much more traditional feel with a quad, 11 residence halls, a student center, um, a big library. It's where you you know, see a student going to class in a DePaul hoodie. A 15 minute ride away on public transportation is our campus in Chicago's financial district called our Loop Campus. Uh, here students take elevators to class instead of walking across the quad and you'd be much more likely to see a student going to class in a blazer, maybe coming straight from an internship, job shadowing um, or informational interview in the city with a, another blue demon. Almost all of our students are gonna take classes on both campuses. Academically, students in those classes pick from over 300 different options. Some of our most popular programs are housed, excuse me, Gary's talking to me. Um, some of our most popular programs are housed in our College of Business and in our conservatory style programs in music and theater. Um, science and health focused degrees at DePaul are very strong and we have accelerated options in medical related professions where you can actually skip a professional test like the MCAT. And then the College of Computing and Digital Media is our fastest growing school and is home to film and television, animation and game design. We have several honors options at DePaul University wide and then specific options in science and business and a three plus three accelerated program with our law school. If you're undecided, maybe you like a lot of things, no worries. We're double major and minor friendly across schools and colleges. And as long as you're in good academic standing, you can change your major at any point. Our students are very involved on campus. We have about 400 different clubs and organizations. So you can cheer on the NCAA Division I Blue Demons, play club or intramural sports, get involved in polit political, religious, um, academically focused clubs, join fraternity or sorority life. Um, you can also plan ca on campus events. So in one afternoon, you can meet to plan um, the on campus um, music festival that happens every year. You can also go see your friends in an improv show and then sample the local fair with the pizza club. Um, to help our students get used to this city, every freshman takes a seminar in their first quarter called the Chicago Quarter Class. 
You go on site visits, you explore the city using one of 100 different topics as a lens. You could take a class all about the Cubs, crime and politics in Chicago, improv in the city, or art and public sculpture. In that last class, you'd go on group excursions to the Art Institute and the Bean, of course, but you'd also get out of the loop in Lincoln Park and explore murals in Pilsen and get to know how the history of that community impacts the experience of its residents and the art that they create. And then you also um, design your own mural as a part of that class as well. This class overall is a really great way to get to explore new neighborhoods, to learn how to use the L and the buses, and then get acquainted with resources that will help you be successful, like the Writing Center, our Career Center, and then our Center for Students with Disabilities. Speaking of careers, we're very proud of our outcomes at DePaul. Six months after graduation, 91% of our students are employed or continuing their education. And a lot of this stems from the fact that you're required to do experiential learning in your junior year, which will typically look like a study abroad program, an internship, or an intensive based, um, intensive community based service learning project. Um, if any and all of this sounds interesting to you, eventually you'll apply to DePaul on the Common application. We utilize a holistic application review process, meaning we'll look at essays, resumes, you know, activities, summaries, letters of recommendation, transcripts, and maybe a test score. We've been test optional for about 10 years for admission decision, for merit-based scholarships, and for our honors programs. You don't need a test to be considered for any of those. If you're thinking about DePaul, we really want to encourage you to think about how you would like to highlight your own strengths in the application. And if a test score does not reflect who you are as a student, or maybe you don't have one, that is no problem. Um, there are a ton of ways to connect with DePaul these days. There's obviously a lot more to cover than I've even mentioned here. Um, I didn't really talk about housing, study abroad, the volunteer work our students do throughout the city. So reach out to me. Let me know what would help as you're considering DePaul. Um, I will drop my contact information in the chat and keep an eye on any questions that you put into the Q&A as well. Um, please reach out. That is all for DePaul. Thanks so much. Hi everyone, I know I am up next. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Marie Burry Lowe. I am one of the Associate Directors of Admission here at Chapman University. And so I'm happy to be presenting to you this afternoon um, and talking a little bit more all about Chapman. We're a mid-sized private liberal arts and pre-professional institution with about 7,500 undergraduate students and about 13 to one student to faculty ratio with about 24 students in your average class. This really means that you're going to get to connect with your faculty members at the start of your semester, at the start of each class, be able to raise your hand, be able to connect with them on a really individual level. Some of our faculty members have brought students pizza in the library during finals week or during midterms. Maybe you're going home with them um, during a religious holiday or something that you can't make it back to the Bay Area for. So you'll definitely get to um, have a personalized approach from them as well. There are nearly 10 different schools and colleges at Chapman for you to choose from. Everything from our sciences to our uh, more liberal arts, English humanities type programs, as well as engineering, film, performing arts, everything, business, all different kinds of things for you to study. Chapman is a institution that really does actually require you to take courses outside of your major of interest. And so you'll be taking not just your general education curriculum as well as your major courses, which by the way, you do get to step into in your first semester of your first year. Though if you're undecided, you'll have lots of options in terms of how you want to explore those courses and figuring out what comes next. Many students, because of our curriculum, have an ability to add in a, at least a minor, if not some students choose to do a second major, some students decide to do double minors, all different ways that you can really personalize that to you. We're really big on hands-on learning. And so as you're thinking about getting into those classes, you'll be getting your hands dirty right from the get-go. Whether that's building your own business plan, teaching in a classroom for your education program, being in a maker space as an engineering student, building your own films and being on set or performing and being on stage, there's lots of options that are there for you. We are quite geographically diverse with 48 different states represented in nearly 80 different countries on campus and study abroad on our campus is certainly something that's very much encouraged with over 50% of our students taking advantage of it. Our academic calendar really helps our students because we have a January term that students are able to utilize that's included in your cost of attendance um, as you're thinking about those next steps too. 
located in Southern California. You have lots of different resources right near you. We're about 10 to 12 minutes from Disneyland. So if you know where that is, you know where we are on a map. We're not all that far from Los Angeles, about 20 minutes to the beaches and just north of San Diego as well. Certainly that Southern California experience where you can both ski and snowboard and get to the beach and surf all in the same day. In terms of outcomes, our students are doing things that are really great. This is just a, such a small example of some of the places that our students have ended up following their graduation at Chapman. Over 80% of our students are doing some sort of internship while they're a current student, and over 90% of them have some sort of culminating senior experience, meaning a senior thesis, a research project, something of that sort. So that'll look different for each and every major as students are navigating that part of the process, but all of that will really help you in navigating that internship um, or job prospect as you're moving forward. Of course, we do have some four plus one and three plus two type programs too. So happy to go over those in more detail if you have questions about them after this. We are an expanding and ever-changing campus. So if you've been familiar with Chapman recently, the Keck Center is our newest addition to our campus in terms of academic resources. It's 140,000 square feet of brand new science and engineering space and certainly allows our students to get really hands-on up close and personal with the sciences and doing some undergraduate research. And then we just opened a new housing facility on campus as well. In terms of the academic or involvement on campus, there are nearly 200 different clubs and organizations that our students are part of, as well as Division Three athletics. So there's lots to do, everything from cultural and religious organizations to the just for fun kind of clubs. Um, if you like camping and being outside, there's a club that's called the Burnt Marshmallow Club. So lots of different range um, that you can join there. This past year, we had just over 15,000 students apply to the university with a 57% uh, admission rate, you'll see average GPA there, and almost 80% of our students applied as test optional. Our admitted student numbers looked quite that, um, that same way too. So if you don't have a test score, um, or you don't feel like your test score is representative of your academic abilities, absolutely okay, you don't need to submit one. We are test optional moving forward. So while this was something that for us um, started just before the pandemic, it was actually really rooted in so much institutional research as we moved forward with that. You'll see our admission deadlines are up on your screen. We do have a couple of admission deadlines for programs that require an early deadline. And so those programs are up there too, our film production, theater performance, screen acting, television writing and production program, uh, dance, as well as our pre-pharmacy program all require an early deadline of either early action or early decision for November 1st. Many of our students are eligible for merit-based scholarships. Those range from $12,000 to $32,000 each year. And then many, many students are eligible for need-based financial aid. We'll certainly work with you each through this process as we know each student and family has their own unique circumstances. So feel free to reach out as you're going through this process. We know it's a lot to kind of handle there. We have a pretty big admission team, but I work with a lot of our students that are from the Bay Area. And so you're always welcome to reach out to me directly. I'll put my information in the chat and hopefully I'll see you at another virtual event or um, college fair maybe in person at some point this fall. Thanks so much, everyone. Good to meet you and I will see you soon. My apologies for the technological issues. I hope everybody uh, can see this okay. Uh, again, my name is Martin Vaughn, one of the Associate Deans in the Office of Admission at Providence College. Uh, I am based here in San Diego, California, but work with students uh, throughout the state. Uh, if you were to define Providence uh, or to look for the definition of Providence, uh, Google it, look it up in the dictionary if people still use dictionaries anymore, uh, you would see that 
uh, providence is God's plan or protection for your life. Uh, and I certainly love all of the definitions here from our alumni, current students, our faculty. Uh, but what I really want is for you to define providence for yourself. Uh, we are a Dominican Catholic uh, liberal arts and sciences college uh, with a business school. Uh, we have 50 friars who actively live and work on campus uh, in a variety of office variety of offices, uh, certainly campus ministries, you can imagine, uh, certainly on the faculty, even in the admissions office. They are definitely an integral part of the PC experience. Uh, often I get the question, uh, you know, what sets the Dominicans apart from uh, the Jesuits, from the Lasallians, from the Vincentians, et cetera, et cetera. I really feel that there are four pillars uh, that really differentiate Dominicans from other Catholic orders. Uh, first being study, uh, certainly prayer, uh, preaching coming next. We are the order of preachers. And then last but certainly not least, I really feel it's community. Uh, and we really feel that uh, together we can find a greater truth uh, than we can find on our own. Um, we love being located in the biggest uh, city and the smallest state in the country, uh, really located in the heart of New England, just an hour from Boston and three hours from New York City. Uh, Providence is the state capital of Rhode Island. Uh, has a metro population of just about 180,000 residents, and we sit just two miles uh, from downtown Providence. Really allows our students easy access to the city, uh, provides great uh, academic opportunities, uh, co-curricular options, definitely social engagement. Uh, definitely a, a student-friendly city that's home to five other colleges, five colleges and universities. And so if you're a foodie like me, certainly if you're a sports fan, uh, obviously if you're into the arts or if you're a history buff, I definitely think Providence could be a great fit. Now, our undergraduate population of just over 4,100, I really feel naturally creates interaction uh, with faculty and staff. I feel like it's large enough uh, to provide a host of options uh, for you as a student, but also uh, you don't ever feel overwhelmed. So across our three schools, we have 53 minor, excuse me, 53 majors and 40 minors from which our students can choose. Uh, our largest individual major is biology, but we do have over 40% of our students uh, enrolled in the business schools. So you can see the four majors there, uh, plus we have a five-year MBA program. We were the first school in the country to offer uh, a major in public and community service studies, but I really feel like our most unique major is our health policy and management program. Some other notable majors uh, really I feel are creative writing, uh, biochemistry, and definitely musical theater. Uh, and we're also excited to announce a brand new major is technology and production. Uh, certainly in a non-COVID environment, um, we typically we usually see about 60% of our students participating in off-campus study. There are 300 different programs across 40 different countries uh, from which you can choose. Uh, over 120 student-led organizations at PC. Uh, so whatever you're involved with uh, at your high school, it's likely that we have it at Providence. Everything from an esports team to the Gaelic Society to our Outdoor Adventure Club. Uh, we were voted the number two school in the country last year for intramural sports participation uh, with over half of our students participating. So there's definitely something for everyone. Um, Yes, it is the city of Providence, Rhode Island, but I feel like Friartown is the better name. Uh, we are Division I for athletics. Uh, we're members of the Big East Conference, uh, and our primary mascot, Dom, uh, is annually voted one of the scariest mascots in all of college sports. So just want to talk briefly about the admissions process. As always at Providence, the biggest driving factor behind all of our decisions will be the strength of your curriculum. How much have you challenged yourself in comparison to what's available to you uh, at your school? Uh, rigor within reason, uh, we like to say. Uh, we do recalculate GPAs, so I definitely think that's important to note. So the GPA we use in our internal uh, deliberations uh, is really gonna be uh, a lot more closely related to your unweighted GPA on the transcript. Uh, we've been test optional for, uh, gosh, this is year 15 for us, uh, so definitely uh, part, of the, part of the process. So here is my contact information. We certainly hope that later this spring or obviously the summer, we'll be able to expand our in-person visit opportunities. But until then, please enjoy some of our virtual options. And with that, we will actually keep it in New England and turn things over to Jesus uh, from the University of Vermont.
Thanks, Morten. My name is Jesus Ramirez, Regional Associate Director for the Office of Admissions. I'm also based in San Diego and manage the entire West Coast for the University of Vermont. So if you decide to apply to the university, I'll be your admissions counselor. The University of Vermont is a public research institution with about 10,000 undergraduate students. In terms of academics, we have a lot of different programs, anywhere from engineering to business to education, arts and sciences, humanities, we have a lot of different programs. Every single program is direct entry, including nursing, engineering, and business. So if you know what you wanna study, you can start working right away. Otherwise, there's plenty of different options. Some unique programs at the University of Vermont include our animal sciences for students that wanna go into becoming a vet. We have a bachelor's, master's, and a PhD in food systems, so we take our food very seriously. And we have, uh, we're very passionate about environmental studies. That is a program that you can study at three out of the seven different colleges. In addition to our academics, we also have a hospital and a medical school right on campus, which provides a lot of exposure for students interested in the health and natural sciences. Fun fact, UVM is the fifth oldest university in New England after Harvard, Yale, Dartmouth, and Brown. But if you've been to our campus or been uh, browsing our, through the, our website, you'll see that a lot of our buildings are actually pretty new. A few years ago, we opened a brand new residence called right on Central Campus. A couple of years ago, we opened our brand new STEM facility, which will be a great resource for all our students. And we're in the process of building a brand new multi-purpose athletic facility. Our students, we like the fact that UVM is a medium-sized uh, institution where they're able to find all the resources associated with a large public research institution, but at a smaller scale. Uh, our average class is about 32 students, and the overall faculty-to-student ratio is 1 to 18. Our students also like the fact that at UVM, they're able to find urban and open spaces. We're located in Burlington, Vermont, which is the largest city in the state of Vermont and also a super fun college town. Mount Pelier is about a 30 minute drive and Montreal, Canada is about an hour and a half away. But we're also surrounded by beautiful green mountains and just down the street from our campus, we have Lake Champlain, which are great resources for either research or uh, recreational activities. As a division one school, there's many exciting things happening at UVM, athletics being one of them. We're a division one school, and we also have clubs, uh, club sports, intramurals, and uh, over 200 clubs and organizations. We also have a Greek system for those who are wanting to be part of the Greek system. But at the end of the day, what really excites our students are academics. Every student has an academic advisor that will help them uh, ensure a full year pathway to success. And for those students that are wanting to get their bachelor's and master's within five years, we have about 40 different options. At UVM, over 70% of our students come from outside of Vermont, which is pretty unique. And every single first year lives in a learning community. These learning communities match your interests, will be inside of the classroom or outside of the classroom with your living environment. And they include arts and creativity, sustainability and wellness environment, among others. As you're getting ready for the application process, at UVM, we use the holistic approach. We are test optional until fall 2023. Uh, so if you're able to send your test scores, send them. If not, don't worry about it. You can submit your application through the Common App or My Coalition starting August 1st. And at the point of admissions, all students will be automatically considered for a merit scholarship. These merit scholarships are based on your academics. So the stronger your GPA, the better scholarship you'll be eligible for. We encourage all students to complete the FAFSA as well for any additional financial aid. But for our merit scholarship, there's no additional application. Your admission application will be your application for financial aid. And every single year we enroll great students from the West Coast and students from the Northern California come to Vermont because they wanna be serious about their academics. They wanna be able to conduct research and build those meaningful relationships with the professors. But they also come to Vermont because they love the outdoors, whether it be running and swimming in the nice summer months or snowboarding and skiing in the winter months. They love the outdoors. And lastly, our students from Northern California come to Vermont because they're environmentally conscious. Whether that's something they wanna study or not, most of our students come to UVM because they wanna use their career to make a more sustainable world. 
So if any of these attributes reflect on what you're looking for at a university, perhaps you can check out the University of Vermont. There's my contact information. If you have questions, concerns, please feel free to reach out and I'll pass it on to Jessica from Oberlin. Thank you, Jesus. Hi, everybody. My name is Jessica Cummings. I'm an Associate Director of Admission at Oberlin College, and I'm coming to you from my home in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm based out of our campus. Um, we're located in Oberlin, Ohio, but I do cover all of California, and about 12% of our applicants and about 12% of our students are from the state of California, so it's a pretty big region for us. Um, what I'm showing you here is just our brochure as I tell you a little bit about Oberlin. So we are a Midwestern liberal arts college. Like I said, we're located in Oberlin, Ohio, just a short distance, about 30 miles from the great city of Cleveland, Ohio, and about 25 minutes from the Cleveland International Airport. Um, and one thing we like to say about Oberlin is that we're a big, small school in the context of other undergraduate liberal arts colleges like us. And so while we provide students with all the benefits that come along with attending a small residential undergraduate college, such as small class sizes and close relationships with faculty, um, strong access to undergraduate graduate research opportunities. We also are able to offer our students some of the facilities and opportunities that you more typically find um, available at larger institutions. So we're small in the sense that our average class size is 18 students, student to faculty ratio is 11 to one. Um, and we have a, um, but we also have a larger uh, overall enrollment um, than what you might find at other small schools with nearly 2,900 students all together across our two divisions. So we have the College of Arts and Sciences, which is our liberal arts school, which has about 2,300 students. And then we share our campus with Oberlin Conservatory of Music, which has about 550 students attending um, in a pre-professional music program. And so while you're recognized many of your classmates across campus, if you come to Oberlin, it's still a big enough community where you're never gonna know everyone and you're always gonna meet new students every year. Um, our, our relatively larger size as a small school does allow us to offer more than 50 academic majors and programs in our liberal arts school, about 25 majors in our music school, and altogether about 1400 courses available to students each academic year, ranging from historical harpsichord performance to pirates and piracy in times past. You'll notice that there's a real breadth and diversity within our curricular offerings as well. And our campus is large. We have 440 acres, a lot of space, as well as some top-notch facilities. Um, we have, for example, among our science uh, faculty, more than $5.25 million in active National Science Foundation grant funding for research involving Oberlin students as their research assistants. Among the equipment available, you'll find computational modeling um, opportunities with our supercomputer, NMR spectrometers, confocal microscopes, a cell culture lab, a greenhouse, an observatory and planetarium. You also have access to superior library resources in four distinct facilities. We have four libraries totaling 2.4 million items. Another really key feature of Oberlin is how we fuse rigorous academics and the creative arts like no other place. And perhaps the most distinguishing feature, as I mentioned, is that we share the campus with the two schools, Oberlin College and Oberlin Conservatory, a top liberal arts college offering BA degrees in academic programs, and a world-class conservatory in music offering bachelor's in music degrees. And students actually can pursue degrees from each school at the same time if they're interested it's called double degree. It's a five year program um, and it's something that about 200 or so students are doing at any given time. Um, some other notable things about our conservatory is that it's the oldest continually operating music conservatory in the country. Um, it's renowned nationally and internationally as one of the top undergraduate conservatories. The significance of the conservatory of music on our campus cannot be overstated. It plays a vital role in the life of our students. Um, the students in the College of Arts and Sciences and the music school do share all facilities such as residence halls, dining halls, clubs and organizations. So friendships naturally form between students from each division. Students in the College of Arts and Sciences have unprecedented access to music opportunities. Not to mention that even if you're not a musician, you have access to attending approximately 500 live music concerts that take place per nine month academic year on campus. Um, so for example, we have three operas a year. I personally had never seen an opera before. I worked at Oberlin and now I see three per year. Um, we additionally have um, one of the most uh, notable college art museums in the country, the Alma Memorial Art Museum, with over 15,000 pieces in our collection. Um, we run a program that allows students to rent pieces of art for just $5 to hang in your dorm room. That's our art rental program. 
And finally, we have about 40 theater and dance productions um, per year on campus. So as you can see, for students interested in fusing their arts and academics, Oberlin is really truly the place to do that. The last thing I want to say about Oberlin is um, we have a longstanding commitment to social engagement and to diversity. Oberlin is known for um, being the first college in the US to adopt an admissions policy to admit students regardless of their race back in 1835. Um, and in 1837, uh, we also admitted uh, women as the first undergraduate institution to do that and to become a co-educational uh, college. Um, so in summary, the three takeaways about Oberlin I hope to have conveyed. One, we're the big small school. Two, we uh, fuse the academics and the arts like no other place. And finally, Oberlin and a commitment to social engagement and diversity that continues on um, to this day. Thank you. Uh, and I will share my content information in the chat um, after I stop sharing my screen. Thank you for joining us for this session. Please remember after you close this window, there'll be a quick four oh, question survey uh, that you- oh, sorry. Yet. Thank you, okay. Sorry. <laughs> hey everyone, Richmond's still here. Um, I'm gonna share my screen real quick and show you, you all. Thank you. All right. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Heather Selby. I am an admission officer from the University of Richmond in Richmond, Virginia. I'm going to shake things up a little bit and actually play about a four and a half minute video for you all that will provide a nice overview about academics, the student experience at Richmond, and cover outcomes. So what you can anticipate with a degree from the University of Richmond. Once we finish up with the video, I'll pop back on to talk briefly about the admission process and then we'll go from there. So with that, let me go ahead and share this for you all. Please let me know if for some reason you can't hear audio once I have it all turned on. Got it. Let me, I'm sorry, guys, I just saw the chat. Um, let me stop sharing and try to reshare. I'm sorry about that. One second. Share sound. Let's go here and I'll try that again. Sorry, everyone. An idea, a passion, a desire to change the world and a drive to challenge yourself. It starts within you and it leads here to the University of Richmond. Located on a beautiful 350-acre wooded campus just minutes away from downtown Richmond, we are a private university that gives you the best of both worlds, all the economic, professional, cultural, and social resources of a capital city coupled with the vibrant, diverse, and inclusive community of our suburban college campus. From pristine Atlantic beaches to the Blue Ridge Mountains to our nation's capital, our central location can readily connect you to world-class cultural, recreational, educational, and professional opportunities. But it's the opportunities available right here on campus that are truly impressive. The University of Richmond is home to three undergraduate schools, the School of Arts and Sciences, the Robbins School of Business, and the Jepson School of Leadership Studies. However, there are no direct entry programs for any of these schools. What does that mean for you? Well, there's no pressure to immediately declare your major. Once you enroll, you'll have time and access to explore more than 100 majors, minors, and concentrations. Our average class size is only 16 students, all taught by real professors, no teaching assistants. 
We're also committed to undergraduate research and mentorship opportunities. That means you'll get the kind of personal attention you need when narrowing down your choices. Can't decide on one major? No worries. More than two-thirds of our students pursue multiple areas of study. We admit the most talented, accomplished students. Then we do everything we can to ensure you can bring your talents here. That includes meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted students. When you're not in class, well, that's where the vibrant community we mentioned really comes into play. Over 90% of our students choose to live right here on campus. We're also home to more than 180 student organizations. From academic, cultural, leadership, religious, and honor societies, to fine and performing arts, service organizations, and Greek life. If you have an interest in it, chances are there's an organization here waiting for you to join. Searching for something a little more competitive? Look no further than our intramural athletics or the 17 teams of our NCAA Division I Richmond Spiders. The Richmond experience isn't limited to what you can do on campus, though. 67% of spiders study abroad through more than 70 programs across 35 countries. And when it comes to internships or research projects, we won't just encourage you, we can help you fund them. The Richmond Guarantee ensures that every undergraduate is eligible to receive up to $4,000 for an unpaid or underpaid summer internship or faculty mentored research project. And does it pay off? In short, yes. Every year, we host more than 150 career workshops and conduct more than 600 interviews with job recruiters right here on campus. And when you graduate, you'll join more than 51,000 spiders living and leading in all 50 states and 95 countries around the world. From Wall Street to Hollywood Boulevard to near-Earth orbit, wherever you go, you'll find that spiders are everywhere. And that's a good thing. Our interconnected web and career preparation helped 94% of our grads find employment within six months of graduation. So, what's your idea? Your passion? Bring us your dream and we'll help you achieve it. There's no telling just how far it will take you, but we can tell you where it starts. It starts within you and it thrives at Richmond. Okay, so thank you for bearing with me as I had those audio difficulties, but hopefully that gave you a nice overview about the University of Richmond. We are having holistic review process at Richmond and you can apply through either the Common App or the Coalition application. A few things to keep in mind that stand out about our application process is that we do have a supplemental essay requirement. And so we do ask that our applicants provide about a five to 600 word additional essay on a variety of different prompts that we'll post in this summer to help us get a better idea of your writing, your personality, and what you're going to bring to our campus. So if you're interested in applying to Richmond this upcoming fall, I'd recommend you keep an eye on our website this summer. And if you are able to, we will be offering in-person tours and information sessions this summer as well. So hopefully you're able to make your way out to Richmond, Virginia. Um, thank you all so much. That's everything I have for you. And I think I'm the last person. So thanks. This is officially the end of this session. Once you close this window, you have a four question survey you complete for us as well. And after this event, you'll head to the college fair. So thank you all for coming. Present representatives, thank you all for coming as well to share information about your different institutions with the crowd. You all have a wonderful evening and we'll see you again real soon. Thank you all for everything. Have a good one.